Hello everybody. Today I'm going to talk about the proof that you're in a dream. The proof that you're living in a dream. I don't care who you are. You know, you might be my best friend. You know, people that are close to me are aware that, you know, I I'm not fooled. I'm aware that I'm unplugged from all of this. I'm unplugged from uh, the matrix, what we call the matrix, which is um, the matrix. The idea of the matrix basically is um, that you are that society. You are born into society, into a society that has its rules set out for you, and the rules are just what it is. And uh, uh, you are born in it. You have to abide by the rules. But those of us that have been, that have uh, had a spiritual awakening, uh, like I did, um, I had a near that experience. Like I, I, I died. Like I was halfway there. You know, I was not all the way there because then I probably wouldn't have come back. My consciousness wouldn't have come back to my body. But um, so when I went to the other side and I came back here, and <laughs> I realized that. The other side, uh, where we refer to uh, as the land of the dead, or uh, the land of spirit, in this side, the land of the physical, or the land of the alive, it's just it's total bullshit. You know, the other side, the land of the spirit. Um, the other side, the other side, the land of the spirit. And then this plan, the physical plan, it's the same thing, okay? It's the same thing. People get that mixed up. They like to say, oh, we are in the physical plane. Uh, we're in the, you know, matter, physical plane. No, 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 no. It's the same thing. You are in the spirit plane. You are always in the spirit plane. You never left the spirit world, okay? When, when I had this uh, close encounter with death, uh, like my whole consciousness or you know suddenly uh, I wasn't in this body like I couldn't feel my body I, I didn't know where I was but I wasn't human um, and then when I came back I came back with the same feeling with the same understanding but it's, it's like I never left that place from I don't understand how everything went down back then uh, but when I suddenly gained consciousness, consci when I suddenly gained control of my physical body, uh, I realized that I never, I, that feeling, that wherever I was, I was still there. I never left that place. Okay? What I'm trying to say is, the spirit world, you're still in it. When I came back, the reason why I never left was because then I remembered that I was always in it. You know, I was always in it. I never left the spirit world. So here's a proof that you're in a dream. That you're in the spiritual, you're in the spirit. That there is no such thing as there is no such thing as physical matter or you know, no no no. Oh well physical beings. You know. Okay, no. Who you are? Your body cannot contain who you are. Meaning to say like your physical vessel. You know, those of you that are very close to me, like my friends and my family that you know understood you know some of the things that i went through it took my family a very difficult time to catch up i don't know why i don't know why they thought i was uh, i was crazy or they thought i was delusional <laughs> i mean when you become too conscious like too aware like when you see through this physical dimension where you're seeing everything when you are seeing beyond um beyond just the human body like you're see, looking into their soul, um, you begin to understand that there is no such thing as delusion, okay? Because everything is a dream, okay? Everything is a dream. So, I mean, they were they were a little, uh, they were a little worried. Um, yeah, those of you that are close to me are aware of the way I see the world. Like I don't, I don't allow myself to be fooled. You know, I'm too smart for that. And I'm too smart for that. There's no way I can be fooled. Especially after what happened to me. I woke up and I exited this whole thing. This whole matrix. You know. And. 
I'm gonna jump right into it. I wanna keep this video short. All right, this is the proof that you're in the drip. Okay, but there's no such thing as physical matter. I'm gonna use the example of the uh, the chicken or the egg. Which came first? The chicken or the egg? Which came first? Um, this is how I'm gonna answer it. I'm just gonna answer it. I'm not gonna try to be around the bush. It's like your accent, your accent, which came first, matter or life? So meaning to say, um, meaning to say that if matter did not exist, meaning to say that, I mean, meaning to say that if life did not exist, would matter have existed, physical matter? Like this solid wall that is right behind me. This solid wall that is right behind me. This is my comfortable, you know, bed. Everything, everything solid that you're looking at. Your phone, your iPad, whatever device you're using to stream this video. If you did not exist, would any of this stuff have existed? Think about it. Just take a moment to think about it. Like meditate on it. Let it sink in. In the now present moment. Just let it sink in. Look around your environment. All your surrenders. If none of those if you were not alive to observe any of these solid materials, your clothes, your nice cars, you know, that money, you know, nice house, whatever, whatever it is that floats your boat. If you're not around to observe those things those things have existed in the first place now now some most of you that uh, use your intellect to think a lot your logic to think about it instead of your feelings you should always use your feelings to think it's very important important don't use your logic your logic will deceive you use your feelings how you feel you know pay attention to your feelings it will always give you the secret to the universe it never lies to you that is the way we communicate with God. That is the way we communicate with everything. Okay? So those of you that are, you know, probably in the mind, you might be saying, well, Silver, if I'm dead, uh, all of this stuff is still going to be here. Like, what are you talking about? If you were dead, like Silver, if you do not exist right now, you know, for me to watch this video that you're making right now, uh, if you did not exist, I will still be existing. Okay? If you are dead and gone and forgotten, okay? The universe goes on. Life goes on. Now, that is where I hate to bust your bubbles. But no, that's a lie. Don't think with your head. Think with your heart. Okay? There is no such thing as death. There's no such thing as death. Yeah, there's no such thing as death. It might be crazy for you to understand. It might be crazy for you to be listening to right now. But if I die, if I truly die, you will cease to exist. In fact, you would not have existed in the first place. Okay? Now, the saying that we are one, it's not just the same, my dude, it's not. It is not just the same. It's real. It's real. I've been there. I've been on the other side. I've seen it. You know, you can call it the metaphysical plane. And that other side, it's still here. Okay, it's still here. You've heard, you've heard stories of people talk about they die and then they come back to life. And then people will imagine it like, oh, they die and uh, this portal open up in the sky and whatever and then they come back to life and then oh it's the physical plane that they went to the spirit world and then no it's still it's the same thing the only difference was when i came back to my body when i regained consciousness of the part of my brain that enabled me to control my nerves again and i was able to move um i brought the same like i was awoke okay that's all i can say like i, I was dead and i was like alive so then I understand that you, you can't die. Consciousness never dies. Okay? It never dies. Like that pain, that spirit world that I was in, 
when that well was resting, I had so much space and so much free will. Uh, it just felt like this whole time I've been trying to breathe my whole life and I couldn't breathe properly. And suddenly I had so much room to breathe and it felt so good. And it felt so good because everybody, everything, my surroundings, my environment, they wanted me to breathe. Like they were trying to help me. They were trying to support me to breathe. You know, they were trying, they were wishing the best for me. That is the reason why we're not fully conscious that we are in the spirit plane still. It's because uh, in this plane, in this level of spirit plane that we're in, the vibration, the spirit vibration is very low because we are caught enough love from each other. Okay? That thing that enables us to breathe, to be free, to express ourselves, to do whatever. If I should die, if I should truly die, nothing would exist. Nothing, not a freaking thing would exist. Like this universe wouldn't have even been birthed into existence. Matter wouldn't have existed. Time and space wouldn't have existed. Nothing would have existed. Okay? If you died, I wouldn't matter. I would die as well. Okay? For those of you that are listening out there, you know, those are my friends that are probably going to be watching this video. They already know how I think. They know I'm, I'm aware, I'm awoke. I'm, I'm, I'm awoke. Yeah, and, and I can never go back. I just can't. I don't know. I don't even know how to go back. That's the thing. I don't know how to lower my vibration. <laughs> I'm freaking worked it. But um, um, those of you that are listening, right? You need to take this with you. Without anyone being alive to observe matter, solid matter. You know that gold chain, that nice car, that money without anybody being alive to observe it, okay? None of those things would have existed. None of it would exist. None of it, not a freaking thing would exist. Just to imagine how important you are. This is to show you how important you are in creation. Like not a thing in creation goes without you. Not a thing. Not a thing. Okay? So, your dead relatives could be your daughter, your son, your child, whoever, your uncle, auntie, your grandma, or you know, your grandfather, whoever, your loved ones. You know, and I'm sorry. But it could be any of them, but they're not dead. Okay? Nobody is dead. This is all a game. This is all a game. Don't be afraid. You have nothing to be afraid of. Absolutely nothing to be afraid of. Okay? Life is just... It's just a game, man. You're not supposed to take it personal. You're not. You're not supposed to take it personal. Just surrender. Let it go. And the thing is, most of the time... Most of the time, most of us are smart enough. You know, like people like me. I was born woke. I was born extremely woke, so I had a lot of problems, you know, with people growing up as a child, which is why I was uh, one of the one of the people that uh, had the whole spiritual awakening. Then one of the few people um, I don't want to go into that. Um, I had a lovely childhood, a very happy childhood. I was I had wonderful friends, you know. Most of you, most of them are watching these videos. I say I'm greeting you all from my country in Africa and Nigeria. You know, I had such a wonderful childhood, but at the same time, I was extremely empathic. Extremely empathic, meaning to say that I was connected, very connected to the other side. You know, the other side, the land of the dead, the land of the spirit. So I would always feel, I would always sense when, sense people's intentions, either negative in intentions and positive intentions. And most of the time, I try to ignore it. I try to dismiss it. So I had a lot of, uh, I don't want to go into that, but point is that you need to know that you need to take from this video okay what you need to take from this video is that all your loved ones everything that is good every people your family friends every living creature life is precious everyone is important everyone play a part in the puzzle this is all a puzzle and it 
cannot do without one of its pieces. It needs all of its pieces to come together, to fit together. It needs all of its pieces to come together. Okay? It needs it all to come together. They are all important. Everybody is important. They are all aspect of you. You should love them just as much as you love yourself. You love them with your whole heart, even though they don't deserve it. And that's the problem. Okay? Even though they don't deserve it, that is the problem. You love them anyways. You love them anyways, and you keep loving them. And you keep loving them. That is what makes you a master. A master of love. That's what makes you a master. And your reward is peace. You know? Like me, I'm chilling. I'm chilling every day. <laughs> if only people know how much I'm chilling, man. It feels like a cheat code. I swear, it feels like a cheat code. Like I'm like I, I hack the whole thing. The whole system. I'm chilling. I'm chilling too much. It's the process. It's the, it's the problem. I'm chilling too much. <laughs> hey, it's called ascension. You know, it's called rapture or whatever. You know, I don't want to go into that. That's another topic. If you want to watch that, I would. I can put that on the link somewhere. You know, I made a video on that about the rapture or ascension or the event, what people call it, and what it's about. So, so yeah, this is the proof that you are living in a dream. Look at me. Look at my eyes. Yeah. This is a dream. It's all lucid. It's all lucid. It's the reason why most of the things that we do doesn't matter. Most of the things we're attached to that we don't want to let go doesn't matter. All of this is a dream. You know, something or someone who we don't know yet. But people like to call him God or whatever. Or Christ. You know, Christ means love or whatever. This thing doesn't have form or appearance. But it gave us, all of us, it gave us forms, different forms, you know, different aspect, you know, different appearances, you know. But this thing or whatever that we're calling God, okay, um, it is what is holding everything in place. It is what is holding everything in place. When you awaken, when like the they call it thought eye, the pineal gland, when it's stimulated to the point where you can feel people's emotions so deeply, as much as you as if you feel as if it is your emotions that you're feeling, like almost as if you're in their person. I mean, that has happened. That happens to me a lot. It's one of the abilities that I try to control, where I feel people's. Uh, emotions stronger we all have this we are all like that but we we were separated we cut off like our heart became hardened and um, we lost our innocence our childlike innocence that gave, gave us the ability to feel the um it's called empathic to feel the emotions of every beings every creature and but animals or whatever even plants you know even even uh, uh, trees and stuff you can feel their vibration you know you can I don't even want to go into that right now but um, life is precious, okay? Life is precious. It is freaking precious. After what happened to me, I uh, I cut off eating meat. You know, it's the same thing that happens to most spiritual awakened individuals. You know, the moment they have a spiritual awakening, they uh, understand the importance of life, and uh, they cut off eating meat. Because I couldn't see the uh, I couldn't see the reason why an animal that doesn't want to die. Like, it doesn't need to speak in English. You see it resistant. You're trying to butcher it with a knife. And you clearly see it resistant. It knows what you are doing. It's not stupid. Okay? It's, it can sense your, your aggression. Okay? It knows it, everything. Life is connected. It sees what you're freaking doing. And it's trying to get away from you. It's scared for its life. Because it loves its life. It's trying to preserve its life. And you and you choke it and then you butcher it I don't want to go into that because that is stuff like topic like that drives me crazy you know it drives me crazy and I don't like to I don't like to talk about you know 
our ignorance, the ignorance of man, and they will eat onto it and feel sweet. You know, it will it would only last it would only last for you with the taste, the deliciousness would only last in your lips, in your taste bud for freaking like five seconds, barely even. I mean you only get to enjoy the taste for like a few couple minutes, but that, that has cost that animal its whole entire life. Okay? You guys should you guys for most of you that are spiritually awakened. Um but follow my videos. You should look into uh, a guy called Athlin Ed. Athlin Ed. He understands this whole vegetarian vegan thing. And he would he would help you see clarity. Why you should stop behaving a fool. You should stop acting a fool. You don't need to consume meat. You don't need to consume animals. Okay? If they don't want to be killed, who gave you the right to kill them? Okay? We can't be doing this on this planet unconsciously anymore. We can't be asleep forever. It's not it's not right. It's the reason for the ascension. The planet is purging itself. It's cleansing itself from all of this. From all of this ignorance. Okay? So yeah, you're in a dream. You're in a dream. You're watching this video. Okay, you're watching this video. It might as well be the same as you watching this video while sleeping and you're dreaming about you watching this video. It's the same thing. You're sleeping and watching this video and you being uh, awake and watching this video, you're still dreaming. It's all a dream. Okay? It is all a dream. So, remember, before you bully other people, before you bully other people, when I was in high school, I was bullied a lot by a lot of foolish people, very, very foolish people, you know, and I had to defend myself. I didn't like fighting, but I was a very good fighter. I had to beat the shit out of a lot of people. You know, and sometimes I end up feeling having guilt because I had a I had a hurt people and I didn't like it. It wasn't me. But I was physically fit for that. You know, so but what I'm trying to say is for those of you that are listening, you know, maybe a bully or whatever. You know, you may be uh, you may even be a manager, you know, and uh, you have a lot of underlings that are not keeping up and sometimes you have to yell at them and you have to treat them like shit for them to get it. Still gotta remember man. Still gotta remember, none of this shit matters. It's all a fucking game. Like, don't be stupid. Be a walk. It's all a fucking game. Don't be so invested in those things. Like, like it's the end of the world. Like, if they don't get the work done in the right proper way, like, everything is gonna come crashing down. Nah, this shit doesn't matter, dude. So why they say heaven and earth will pass away? But this world remains the same. Everything passes away, dude. I don't fucking matter. You don't fucking matter. Nobody fucking matter. Stop trying to elevate your ego like you matter. Trying to give yourself some kind of importance. You don't matter. You're just a puppet. I hate to break it to you, but you're just a puppet. Like everybody else. You know? You're just a puppet playing a game. Playing a game. The whole point of the game is to try to evolve the system. You're trying to evolve the system by evolving your state of consciousness. By your own individual growth. So if you're not growing, the universe is going to get rid of you. If you're not growing, if you're useless to society, you're useless to me, you're useless to your family, you're useless to your loved ones, to everything around you, the universe will just take you back, you know, do a reset button, you know, it's gonna take God, it's gonna take back the ego, do a reset button. This is all a dream. This is all a dream, this is all lucid. The more we wake up, meaning to say that the more we use more brain power, because we are all fucking stupid, yeah, I said it, including me. We are all fucking stupid. Like, we are not awake enough. Like, we are not using enough <coughs> of who we are. We are not using enough of our brain. We are not using enough of your soul. We are only using less than 10% of our soul. Like, if we begin to use more than 10% of our souls, I wouldn't even need to make these videos. I wouldn't need to talk to you guys that we are in a fucking dream. You would all just know it. Okay? You would just know it. Because how can you explain something that is internal, doesn't age, doesn't die, all knowing, and it goes on forever? A fucking dream. It doesn't take rocket science for you to get it. It's a fucking dream. And that dream is called God. 
that thing or that God or source or whatever. He's the one having this dream. Okay, he's the one having this dream. He or she or whatever. Uh, I believe it's both feminine and masculine energy. You know, it's a, it's a mother and father thing. But these energies are the one having this dream. They're the ones dreaming about all of this, you know. They dreamed about the time when we had a coronavirus. Oh yeah, then that was this time. That was right now. It was happening right now with the whole coronavirus thing. And then they dreamt about how the whole world had to be quarantined. The whole world had to be quarantined, um, literally. Um, and everyone had to be on a, what they call social distancing. Like, I literally can't even go close to my dog. Like, he's social distancing himself from me. <laughs> I don't have a dog. <laughs> Must have been a private that I did fell for that. But um God or the universe or source um also dreamt about a time when we had this whole coronavirus then and then we had to get quarantined and then they ran out of toilet tissues, toilet papers and uh people were freaking out. And uh the gods dreamt about how people were fighting one another. Um what else the God dream about? What's happening now? What's going on uh, today? Uh, pretty much that. that's pretty much what's going on right now uh, I'm not aware of what God's dreaming for the next coming months but I do know that I'm in a fucking dream and I cannot be deceived okay and nothing can deceive me that's why I just I, I keep my distance you know, even my friends you know, all my friends I always keep my distance I always try to respect whatever they're saying because I know that's, that's fucking God man that's God is speaking I need to respect myself I need to make sure I'm listening to what they're saying you know like that's a dream right there. And that's somebody's dream. Somebody's dreaming something right there. Okay, I need to respect whatever they're dreaming. I need to respect their experiences. Okay? But in the end of the day, you don't matter. I don't matter. Fucking American don't matter. The great nation in the world. Um, nothing matters. Nothing fucking matters. The only thing that matters is whoever is having this dream. Whoever is having this dream, because if I'm not observing this everything that is going on, if I'm not here to observe it, it wouldn't exist. None of it would exist. That's what makes this a dream. I'm telling you through my experience, which is why we always have to give, we always have to respect that higher consciousness that is dreaming about you and me. We always have to respect him or her and her. Okay? We respect them by giving them back the credit. We never take the credit for ourselves. We give them back the credit. Meaning, all your experiences in life that got you this far, and you attained this knowledge, and you became this brilliant genius or whatever you want to call yourself, an artist or whatever, you don't fucking matter. If you give that experience back to source, credit it back to source. When you credit it back to source, then source will give you back your own, source would credit you would acknowledge you in a truthful way in a truthful and righteous way that would not give you any ego what, what it would give to you is the sense of fulfillment the sense of yes I deserve this I am your child I am your tool all my experiences all my knowledge all my wisdom it was because of you that I attained it all my riches I give it all back to you you know I reverent who you are and give it all back to you okay you give it all back give it all back you don't need it anyways who needs all that shit in the end of the day it's always gonna be oh somebody's always better than you nah fuck you there's nobody better than me there's nobody fucking better than me only God only God that matters nobody fucking matters so we always have to try to acknowledge back this source and uh, I'm gonna include a video that I made with my with my friends about humility, the importance of the spiritual importance of humility. I'm gonna include that in the link somewhere. You guys need to watch it, check it out. So uh, we had a lot of good messages, yeah, a lot of wonderful messages. So yeah, it would motivate your spirit, it would inspire you, keep you straight. So yeah, if you're not alive to observe the universe, the universe will not exist in, in the first place. Which then begs to differ that who are you then? If you don't matter and God is the only thing that matters, then who are you? I'm gonna try to explain it like this. Imagine a flat surface, okay? Like a like a solid surface. A uh, let's say like a, a pavement, uh, a concrete floor. 
okay that is that is just concrete and it is flat and solid and it's just there it doesn't shake it doesn't it's just there. it's it's, it's stuck it's uh it's it's there it's concreted so it's not going anywhere so imagine that okay and then imagine the dust that is just being that is uh that the wind is blowing from the pavement from the uh and then the dust has eyes okay we're not getting too freaky here nobody's fucking high just try and stay with me and the dust have eyes and then the dust can observe the pavement and see that oh yeah that that is a concrete cemented pavement ground that is concreted and it's not going anywhere that that is oh nothing is not going anywhere now that's what it is you are the dust you are the observer okay you're simply observing god you need to say that everything is god everything is god you are observing god and you and god you and god you be the same you're one and two you're going together nobody is separated you go together that is the problem that we have in this planet that was the fall of man like on a deeper level before you even came before you were watching this video before you were even born okay you you had already created all of this you know we had already agreed on how we wanted everything to be so but that part of us that uh agreed on how we wanted everything to be and you know and then we called it a universal law meaning a law that all consciousness all the different minds both the animals and all life itself living creature and sentient minds all agree on that this is going to be the one truth not the two truth the one truth okay so it's the universal law you people that died on a deeper level even the people that died from this coronavirus so far on a deeper level on a soul level they agreed to it okay they agreed to everything anything in life is created by you know god so i'm gonna go back to that analogy that i was given before that the dust from the pavement which is you you're the observer and then uh you come to ask that uh who, who when you you're asking that if i you know who am i if i don't matter and only god matters then who am i you're the observer you're the dust no you you came from the pavement you from the concrete floor the cemented highway ground you came from it your consciousness you came from it okay you came from literally you came from it as a metaphor you came from it and but that concrete floor is the root foundation that is holding everything in place and it holds everything in place just by being by simply being and you're the one that is now its child or its children which it is supposed to op um, learn from it is supposed to learn from you um through your own guidance through your perspective through experiences through subjective reality so it's seen through your eyes constantly okay and it's learning on how to make the pavement uh i don't know how to make it stronger or how to make it how to make the highway go for a really far distance or how it's trying to see how to make it better basically how to make it more beautiful so it's trying to see how to create how to make heaven even more beautiful so if you if you went through a lot of shit in life if you suffered a lot blame god okay fucking blame god i give you permission a lot of people say well, why would you blame god for all the negative experiences you you know things that you experienced in life but fucking blame who else would you blame you're gonna blame me like who else should you blame blame the aspect of yourself that is operating on 100 percent 100 percent like right now you are not operating on 100 percent you're not because a lot is going on so there's a lot to process you have to process breathing, taking in oxygen. You have to process seeing everything around you watching this video. You have to process the sound that is passing through the different vibrations and frequencies that is going on around you. You're sentient. You have to process a lot. But when you sleep, when you go to sleep, you go back to that 100% to God. It's the reason why I said the dream state and the land of the dead is the same thing. But then I like to take that quote even further to say that the dream state is the land of the dead. And when you are awoke, it's still the same thing. There's no difference. Jesus told the masters in the past to realize that. So they realized that their awoke state was still their dream state. And they began to do some shit. Okay? Levitation became possible. They were able to bend gravity. Simply with their consciousness. Just by how to see the world. Because they saw that gravity didn't have any power over them. Like why should gravity, such a thing as gravity exist? If, if they are everything, if they are consciousness itself, then gravity shouldn't 
You know, you know what I'm saying? Everything is lucid, which is the point of the ascension. We are going back to that superhuman self. We are going back to our ascended self, our light body self. We are going back to our divine self. You know, king and queen. And one of the funny things that I realized about my friends, um, I walk into the radio room one time and uh, suddenly I realized everything. Everyone was calling each other king, king, and I'm like, hey, what's going on, king? What's up, king? I'm like, okay, <laughs> who came up with that? <laughs> it's an amazing thing. You know? We are all kings. We are all royalty. Okay? We are all royalty. So, yeah, uh, this video is already long enough as it is. I believe this is an hour. Yeah, I think that's my limit. One hour. So, you guys try to tune in this time to this dream. You know, I'm going to be trying to dream about some something amazing. You know, I'm going to try to dream about this whole world this whole planet coming together to do stuff together because we need we need that you know we live in a fast-paced environment so much that people nobody can't have time to say let me try to check up on my neighbor let me try to know how my friends are doing like everyone is so busy trying to make that money pay the bills and whatnot that we just we lose touch of ourselves. you know we lose touch of ourselves. and that's one of the things that people can realize um which is already happening um, when people start to have more feel for their own essence, for their soul, like when people start to feel their soul, they start to experience the, themselves, like they start to experience all their essence, all their attributes, they begin to think to themselves, oh shit, the world is coming to an end. <laughs> I've come across such people, like they begin to think, oh shit, you know, everything is evolving, like, you know, time is accelerated. Nah, nah, nothing changed, dude. Nothing changed. Uh, the only thing, the only thing that changed was you, you gain more. Uh, what, what they call brain power you know you gain more brain power more brain whatever is the reason why when i had when i had that yet that experience i cut out meat because i needed to be i wanted to be more connected to that other side to love i call it silver because the middle path i call it it's god call him silver whatever because he's uh yeah it's the middle path the silver lining i mean jesus called him jesus called it christ uh, so many people call it many things god whatever i call him silver because like i begin to understand that evil was justified I mean, if this is a dream, and God is the one that is dreaming all of this, all your experiences, all your negative experiences in life, it was deliberately done to you. That time you got a wedgie, somebody walked up to you in the hallway, you know, at school, you're trying to get your, put your st stuff in the locker, and they give you a wedgie, and some same stuff don't, you know, happen. Or somebody come up to your face, you know, spit on you, well, harass you or whatever i don't know what you went through i had my own experiences everybody did that was god god was dreaming that like god was dreaming that that nigga god that nigga that we call god that nigga that nigga is not he's not pure he's not all pure dude like don't be deceived god is fire he's a force the force to reckon with he's fire and it's not something you play with you know it's why it's called life life is hard life is both the negative and the positive that's what makes it real if life was all positive, all of this would, would be fake as hell. It would be fake as hell. Like, come on, face it. When we play video games, how many of you wants to be the bad guys? Don't lie to yourself. You know you wanted to be the bad guy. Everybody wants to be the bad guy in video games. Like, come on. It's a video game. Why would you want to be the good guy? That's so boring. You're already the good guy in this planet, on this world, in real life. So why would you want to be the video good guy in a stimulated reality where you can do whatever you want? You can get all the money and everything. Why would you want to be the good guy? You don't have to follow the rules. You can fight with the cops. <laughs> That's the thing though. That stimulated reality in this one is the same thing. It's the same thing. But you are forcing yourself to be the good guy here because you feel like you don't want to get yourself in trouble. But most of you are being the good guy because you feel like it is the right thing to do. And then God, is that nigga God, that nigga God that will still slap you on the face. He will bitch slap you on the face. You don't care who you are. You don't care if you're the good guy or the bad guy. It will bitch slap you right across the face. Just for him to evolve. To evolve in what way? To evolve in what way? To gain wisdom. To gain experience. Experience. And that experience can be a bad thing. It can be a girl that was kidnapped when she was just a little girl. Who raped, abused, uh, was forced to live in the basement for years. And in the end of the day, when she uh, turned like... She, after decades of living there, and she's now old enough to try to escape. And uh, 
she tried to escape and get killed. And you say to yourself, what kind of what kind of a life is that? What the fuck kind of a life is that? She chose that path. God wanted to experience that. He wanted to grow. He wanted to gain wisdom. He wanted, he wanted the realness. Okay? The realness. That's why love is real. Love is sincerity. Love is honesty. Love doesn't lie. It tells the truth. It sees you for who you are and it tells you the truth. It will not lie to you. It looks you straight in the face. And it sees you and it tells you what you're doing. It tells you the truth. That's what love is. Love is honest. It cannot lie. It has to tell you what it sees in you. Okay? That's why you can't take those things. You have to respect people that are very honest to you. You have to respect them. Because they are seeing through the divine eyes. The eyes of, the, of a child. So yeah, that's what God is, man. God will fuck you up. He will deliberately fuck you up. You know? Just to get that experience. You know, just to, to know what it feels like. You know? To experience it. And get knowledge. Get wisdom. Get information. Okay? Yeah. Jesus called him Christ. Uh, I called him silver. Okay? Or gray. You know? Uh, and I think you guys should call him gray too. Because he's gray. Okay? He's gray. He's a loving God. He wants what is good for you and me. <laughs> but he can also fuck you up. <laughs> God is fire, man. God is fire. It's why they, it's why they call it life. It's all about uh, the survival of the fetus. You know, the, the weakest perishes and the strongest uh, survives. And this is what God is. The law of the jungle. This is what God is. God is fire. You know, you know he, would, he, would, he does what is in his best interest. Okay? That is why I try to let people aware that what you're doing, the things you're attached to in life, all those things that you're attached to, it don't matter. It don't matter. If it's not making you happy, stop doing it. If it's not making you happy, stop doing it. Leave that fucking job, dude. Leave that job. I've been there. I've been there. I don't leave that life anymore. I just can't. I can't leave that life. My energy would not vibrate on that scale anymore. Like, okay, I, I don't resonate on that vibration anymore. Where I'm being, I have to do things against my will, just so I can survive. Nah, don't do that, dude. Don't do that. You know, silver's got your back. Not me, silver. God, silver's got your back. Okay? Silver wants his evolution. He wants his evolution, but his evolution is always for pleasure. He's a God. One thing you want to know about silver, about God, or whatever, the spirit, the force. He's a God of pleasure. He's a God of pleasure. He loves pleasure. He loves to pleasure himself. He loves to pleasure himself. So why it's called heaven, paradise, where you are in a constant bliss, you're blissed out, you're just blissed out, and whatever makes you happy, you're just blissed out, you know, so he's always going to ensure that he's doing things that pleasures himself, and if he's dreaming of you, and you're having negative experiences, and you don't want that, do all this in your power to get away from that, if you truly don't want that, then it wouldn't be happening to you, no negative experiences will be happening to you. But if it's in your divine plan, meaning if, if that was what your soul came to this planet to experience, because uh, time, time, uh, time doesn't, it's no such thing as time. Okay, everything is happening now, in an instant. Everything is happening now. It's only that there are different levels of consciousness. So, if everything is happening now, and the now moment is like a thread, um, consciousness will have to be measuring itself. What you will call today would be on a scale that vibrates on the tread on one point. And then what you call tomorrow, the scale will go up. But it's still in the same tread. It's because you are the observer, you are the dust. You are observing the pavement, the concrete. The concrete is already solid. It's connected to everything. It is everything. Okay? So when you observe it, when you observe the first point, you go up to the second point, you call it tomorrow. You go up to the next point, you call it next tomorrow. You go up to the next point, you keep going higher and higher up the scale. And it, it, and it would seem like you are growing. It would seem like you're expanding, you're having, uh, you're growing, what's called growth, you're maturing, going from childhood to adulthood. But that's all bullshit. Don't be deceived. You're not growing, you're not, there's nothing different. There's really nothing different about what you, about you. Okay? Time never changed. Time is the same. Okay? Time is the same. Then don't let the observer, which is the human, don't let the human deceive you. 
let go of the human consciousness and go to the heart. When you go to the heart, you you remember, you begin to remember that you never left heaven. The time was everlasting. We need to say that before you were born, you were already alive. And you'd be like, what, what does that mean? How do you already alive? How? You're already alive. Like you didn't get life. Life wasn't given to you from your parent. It couldn't have been given to you from your parent. You self existed. You self existed. You only incarnated through your family, through your parent, because their soul, their vibration aligned so much with yours. It was on the same match with yours. So you incarnated through their DNA. You now when a man has sex and he ejaculates in the ovaries, the eggs, you know, and they do their thing, your consciousness, your consciousness was the one that registered as the egg. Thus creating who you are. Thus creating your personality and everything that you are. But you self-existed. You first created yourself. Okay? You only came through your incarnation. You came through your dream. It doesn't mean they created you. They don't own you. It's one of the things that, you know, we end up thinking that we are attached to families. You're not attached to families. You know, if you want to see how spiritually awake you are, when you wake up from this whole thing and realize that you're in a dream and nothing really fucking matters, it's just live your life the way you want to. Take what you want and leave enough for everybody else. <sighs> when you get on that scale of consciousness, right, you become completely detached from everything and everyone. You know, you become detached from your boy, your families, and then you see it as a bad thing. At first, they see it as a bad thing, but in time, they begin to understand what you're doing. They begin to understand that you're simply giving them permission, you're giving them space to breathe, okay? And then you get scared at first, like, what the what, what are you doing? Be, be grateful with the life you have, but you're trying to grow. You're trying to not, nah, nah, this life is way better than this. Life is way, could be way sweeter than this. You know, I can't settle for less. And then you try to grow and go higher and higher, and it's like, yo, yo, slow down, bro, what you doing? You're taking too much risks, chill. And you're like, nah, bro, I got this. I got this, okay? Life is way better than this. We can be getting everything. I want everything. And they just want you just live in that nice house and you're making decent money to get by, pay your insurance, the mortgage and whatnot. And you're like, nah, bro, nah. This is, it could be way better than this. And they're like, what is wrong with you? Chill. Be grateful. And you're like, nah. <laughs> yeah, so when you have a spiritual awakening, right, go and live with your family. See how that goes. You know, see how that goes. Because then everything begins to rise up to the surface. That's how you uh, resonate. You begin to understand, you know, more and more about who you are. Because then you have to help them heal as well. It still was too much for me, but I'm already way um, over that now. Um, and thank God, that was a very difficult moment in my life. Um, but uh, what am I saying here? So yeah, back to the topic at hand, right? You are the dust or whatever. This is a tread. Time is like a tread, and you're climbing the steps. You're climbing the steps in the tread. You know, you're you're observing climbing the steps in the tread. You know, but you're doing it while you're sleeping. That's another thing that you want to know. You're doing it while you're sleeping, so that it can be fun for you to observe. You know, for you to observe, and you're waking up, but you're supposed to be waking up and remembering that you, that the, obs the thing you're observing, you are also the, your it. So whatever you observe, you become it. So, which is when you understand the law of attraction, and you understand how creation works, and then you have to try to make sure that what you're trying to observe in people is always a good thing. And then in a way, it becomes like a weird thing, like, are they good? Because... Are they their higher positive self because they are their higher positive self or because I see them as their higher positive self? Um, which is when you begin to understand the saying that um, um, love and everything good is given to you by grace. By grace, not by you because you deserve it. I know. Meaning that some higher being or higher consciousness, and that higher consciousness is God, is observing you with love, is observing you by grace. Okay? And when he observes you, he gives you, he's observing something good in you. Something good in you. When he observes you, he observes, well, now I give the analogy with the whole girl, with the child growing up and I mean, being sexually abused and whatever. Now, that is all divine plan. And he's observing, whatever he's observing, he's creating it. So, which is still you in the thread, creating, planting the consciousness and you know, you're growing and you think you're growing. But you know, what's happening is the passage of time which is not really passing by, it's just, it's flowing more through you that you're begin to, beginning to feel more alive, you're beginning to feel more conscious. So you, when you feel more conscious, when you feel more alive, you start to think that, okay, um, I'm growing, I'm maturing, I'm going into adulthood, but you're not really going anywhere. You're still the same from when you were a spawn, a little spawn, to 
to when you became an infant, a child, or way back to when you were just energy, vibrating consciousness. You hadn't taken a body yet, meaning you hadn't become a sperm and you hadn't gone into the ovaries, the egg, and you know, you hadn't gone through all of that process. So, yeah, you're in the spirit. All of this is a dream. If you are not alive to observe this, if you are not alive to observe this, even the famous um, basketball uh, basketballer that just passed away, our close brother, soul brother, Kobe Bryant. If he wasn't, if he wasn't alive, like he, he's not dead. There's no such thing as death. You're raw energy, raw energy, like light. You're the light bulb, like light energy, the sun. You know? So he just went back. He, he exited the body and he went back to uh, the, the sun. So if he's not alive, everything will cease to resist. If nothing, if life doesn't alive, is not alive. This matrix, solid matter, the universe, there wouldn't be no need for like just think about it. If consciousness didn't exist, if consciousness didn't exist even for a second, how would any of this exist? Just, I mean, you just think about it. Use your heart to think about it, not, not, not the logic, not the brain. Okay, tell the brain to sleep for a sec. Use your heart to think about this. Meaning, go within your feelings. Go within your emotions. Just like try and meditate, calm down, and put yourself in, in the shoes, experience it. Experience what I'm talking about. If consciousness, if there's no such thing as life, as consciousness, Let's assume that consciousness should blink for a second, like... How do you think this universe would even exist? It's not possible. It's not possible. Okay? It's not possible. Consciousness is senses itself. It gives birth to senses. You know, it's like people, you know, that say, though, if you die and then, you know, everything is still here. But that's the thing. The body died, not consciousness. Consciousness did not die. The body, which is the five senses, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sense of sight. I just stuck my tongue out. That, that was kind of weird. But your sense of sight, when you look, you ever see things, touch, hearing, your sense of whatever, of everything that you're doing, your senses, all your senses, your heightened senses. It's just human. It's called human. Okay? But then there's something else. Another senses, which is the sixth senses. Uh, the sixth senses, which is consciousness, it's it's just plugged in, dude. It's plugged in. Yeah, the, I hate to say it, but you are a puppet. It's just what are you allowing to control you? Which is the puppet master? Okay, because what you're thinking is what is controlling you. What you have in your paradigms, in your subconscious thoughts, in the back of your mind, that is what is controlling your actions. That is what is controlling your behavior. That is what is controlling your personality. That is what is controlling everything about you just by simply the information that you've gathered about your environment which is why you want to always focus on the positive things because then those are the things that will control you those are the things that will pull you into the reality you want to experience okay so yeah if consciousness did not exist like it's, it's a hard thing to explain it's a, it's a very hard thing to explain like just imagine everything going dark would we be here to with life like life never existed on this planet I didn't exist. Donald Trump didn't exist. You didn't exist. Uh, who else? Who else that you would think matters? Like, fuck them. They didn't exist. Um, your spouse. Oh, yeah. Yeah, your spouse didn't exist. You don't want to hear that, huh? You love her, huh? Your fucker. She didn't exist. <laughs> Nobody existed. I mean, just think about that. I have my own spouse still, right? which I love very much. So fucker. <laughs> so she didn't exist. Nobody existed. Okay? If nobody existed, if there was no life, not even a single organism, organism, no, not, not orgasm, I, I didn't say orgasm, I said organism, not even a single organism, uh, nothing, life did not exist, not even the plants, nothing existed, but plants don't have eyes, so I guess I didn't really have to call them, but if nothing really existed, animals, nothing existed, who would be here to observe this universe, this planet, that this planet even existed, how would we know? Nobody would know, right? How would we know the sun existed? Nobody would know. How would we even know it's such a thing as a, that there is a sun? How would we even know there is a universe? You know, how would we even know that there is such thing as reality? Or oxygen? <sighs> oxygen. How would we know anything is anything? I guess we would all be in a void of darkness, but then again, the void of darkness is still consciousness. It's still a thing. You see what I mean here? 
You see where I'm going here? All of this is a fucking dream. Okay, all of this is consciousness. Don't take it personal. Detach yourself from it. Don't let yourself be fooled. Don't be fooled by, you know, what we've been doing for the past decades on the planet. We've been, we've been, we've been, man, I don't know what we've been doing, man. But we've been doing some shit. I know I have, I have been doing some, some shit. But yeah, detach yourself from everything because nothing fucking matters, dude. You know, nothing matters. I tell my babe that all the time. Like, babe, nothing matters. Like, chill. You know, she's gonna fight with somebody or whoever. I tell her, just apologize. Like, fuck it. Apologize. You know, just fuck it. Nothing matters, man. Just let it go. Just let everything go and just chill. You know? Because if consciousness didn't exist, matter wouldn't exist. And that money that you love so much, that is more valuable and more important than soul. Okay, it is more important than human life. That money that we all love so much, it, it wouldn't even it exist. There's nobody to observe it. It wouldn't have been created. That's what consciousness is. Consciousness is energy. It is a foundation, the structure that holds everything in place. It's what you call mind. It is the mind. But the only thing is, it is mind with, with form. A mind that is not like energy, it's not vibrating. Because when you think of mind, you think of something abstract. You think of something that is vibrating. You think of like something that is like the wind, air. You can't touch it. It's spiritual. It has no form. That's what I'm telling you. You are still in the spirit realm. You never left the fucking spirit realm. You're still in it. Okay? You're still in it. Meaning all of this is a mind. When we think of mind, we think of it like, you know, like something abstract. But this is a mind to a whole nother level. Solid matter is a mind to a whole nother level, which is where the state where we are trying to get to. We are trying to get to that state where we can also mind things into existence. You see what I'm, what, what I'm getting at? Like literally, you can think things into existence just by thinking it. It just like, I mean, you want that money, you just think it into existence. But then if you have that ability to think things into existence, you wouldn't need to think about having money. You think about it much greater things than that. Like world peace, or bringing people together, or helping people heal which is what the ascended masters did over of the past which is what we are all getting to we are all getting to so yeah you're in a dream stay awake stay awake in the dream it's the only way you can get what you want when they say stay awake they mean go out there and do it yourself do it your fucking self nobody will do it for you you need to put your strength into it your energy into it wherever energy goes creation goes so when god sees when silver sees that you're putting energy into it He's gonna try to help you out, okay? Or she, or he and she are gonna try to help create you because they see that, okay, this is your, they're expressing your free will. That father, this is what I'm gonna observe. When you father, I'm gonna see this in you. This is you now. I want you to dream this about me. So then you're telling the puppet master how you want him to control you, okay? That is why Jesus said, uh, I, I don't know what he said. I can't remember. It's something about him being elevated, never elevated. Uh, in the skies, he was referencing towards the end of his um, of his adventure when he would leave the planet and go into a, a different realm, or I don't know. But um, he was referencing about levitation, levitating, that the father would raise him up, would, would levitate the body, would raise him up. Um, I can't remember what part it was, but don't don't worry about it. But yeah, if you have this. Um, back and forth with the universe where you're able to constantly surrender your, your will to him he will be doing it you'll be having so much like you'll be in paradise okay everything you want will be handed to you because you were telling the father that this is how I want you to dream about me like I want you to think this about me I want you to but you're doing it with your energy that is why they say that is how you pray. That is why they say the universe only understands energy. It only understands frequency. It only understands vibration. That is what's called prayer. Okay? Prayer is not, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you know you have to put your hands together and you say the grace ten times or whatever. No, that's not that's no prayer is just by your thoughts. Because you do you, you pray every day. You always is who you are. Your thoughts is prayer. Frequency, vibration is prayer. So the father only understands energy. So wherever energy goes, then he knows that okay, you're serious. It's like, yeah, 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 this is what this person wants. Yeah. Let, let me dream of let me dream about this. And then before you know it, he starts to bring people that are also all also wanting to dream the same thing that you're trying to dream. And then you all come into the same dream. 
into the same dimension to the same wavelength feel me so yeah it's all a dream don't take it personal this video is way long but it's fine it's worth it this is a proof from your brother silver and been to the other side trust me i know what i saw it freaked me out i lost my i lost my mind for days i cried for days when i exited this matrix this whole thing my consciousness went to the part of that is just stuck in the now it's just stuck it never left the now and everything seemed, seemed weird after that it felt like a shadow has been following me all my life and that shadow was me it was a part of me that was just always just there and it, it can't go anywhere else it's it's stuck okay it's just it's a weird thing but it can't go anywhere else okay that part of me was just it wants to it wants to play it wants to experience it it wants to experience love wanted to experience love he wants to know what love is and he wants to know what, know what love is in a way that he doesn't have to control it he doesn't want to control it you know what i mean because it is in control of everything it is god it is controlling everything and if he's controlling everything then the the people that would be in his life the people that would um gather the all the life all the souls that would be in his life then now would be in his experience then now would be mean that he's the one controlling them and they're doing what he wants them to do so then he developed the system that is called surrender meaning to say that uh he wants to experience true love right so he would constantly keep surrendering he would say to them i am transparent this is what i want this is what i want to experience i want to be good to you doesn't mean that are watching these videos i want to be your friend i want to be your brother i want you to be able to relate to me in any kind of way email me leave comments whatever you know i have no problem with anybody unless you don't want to start a fight then you get the claws <laughs> But yeah, um, it knows that it, it is God, meaning that it is God over everything. It is controlling everything, literally. So that what he started to do was he started to give up control, so that he can know true love. He can know who wants to love him in a subjective manner, which is why he created me, and created you. He wanted you and I to experience love, true love. But he wants you to experience love when you surrender. So keep surrendering your emotions, and like keep letting people know. Be aware of your emotions. Be like a woman. In fact, be better than a woman because, you know, I come across a lot of women and they're not there. Most of them are not even emotionally there and it just surprises me like you're supposed to be a woman. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're supposed to always be with God. You know, the feminine energy. You're supposed to be soft and tender. Why do I have to be a soft and tender one? I'm the masculine energy. And yet I have to be that. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you want to... You want to constantly... You want constantly, um, you want constantly surrender so that God can, He can bring those people to you. Don't try to control it. You have the nature of God in you, which is why you want to try to make everything perfect. You want to go out there and fix everything and make sure, oh, I got to do this, I got to do that. I get that. You have the nature of God in you. We all get that. Everybody gets that. You know, nobody wants chaos. Everybody wants everything done perfectly. You know? But what's even beautiful, what's even perfect, is when you surrender. When you just tell, when you give the power away, when you give the power away, literally giving the power away, uh, it's called kinesis, self-emptying. When you are emptying yourself, you're emptying out your will. You're emptying out your will by surrendering it. You know, you're emptying out your will. So when you're constantly being in a state of surrender, where you're just like, you just surrender, like you, you just give up. You're giving up control. Then true love begins to come to you. True love. What is for you will come to you. Like you don't have to fight it. You don't have to force it. That's how I met most of my friends. You know? Uh, that's how I met the women uh, that I love. Um, a lot of good things happened in my life. <laughs> it was without me trying to control anything. I wasn't I wasn't in control at all if anything I was definitely not in control <laughs> and that was what made me in control that was what made me 100% in control because the only thing that I was controlling I was so busy and occupied trying to control was me was this body I was working on it relentlessly